That makes sense. But I mean, they haven't played it all even the once. Statistics about why Gambit should be winning this one, but FPX, you feel like they're going to be the team to pick this one up. I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like Gambit have a, a much better chance of now pulling this back and sending us to a third map, but there's only one way to find out. Well, here on overpass, Gambit making the play into the B site. No one in monster, no one really holding that monster position, but Chris J further back at Graffiti. He's gonna try and land these first early shots, but it's Stick on Madden that have come in with a double between two players. Inters fights back with a good double kill of his own. Axel continuing and Inters with another one. It's all on Farley and he's shut down. Four kills for Inters into the pistol round. This is the player when we when we spoke to uh when we spoke to Gambit, I think it was Hobbit who mentioned his like uh, interest is actually our best aimer, and I'm like, wait, what? You have you have Shiro and you have Axile, and you're saying that he's the best aimer? It's like, yeah, it's just that he takes all the shit rolls. Literally, that's what he said. So, showing what he's got there, they kind of pretty much walked into a trap. There were four CTs lying in wait. There was early aggression from FBX to a short, and it looked like it was going really, really wrong for uh, for Gambit, but they they bring it back. Good stuff. Force by going to be coming in for the CTs. Danny, bit of a labored spray. He gets to kill the sticker. He, he wants his kill though, but Axile, ready and waiting, plucks his head off his shoulders like a chicken. You can get a 5v3. I wonder if people actually pluck chickens' heads off. That's uh, going to require crazy strength. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure they, they, they pluck their feathers, Bly. I, I don't know if many people are going around uh, plucking their heads off. I think maybe they snap their neck a little bit, but I think. Plucking their heads off, man. That would take quite a bit of effort. It would be yeah, quite gruesome like, as well. Pretty, I mean, but, but but I've heard that phrase, like, you know, plucking chicken's head off. I don't know where I heard it, but anyway. I don't know, maybe they do. I'm not a professional oh, but, but, uh, but chicken think about it. That, that's... <laughs> you might, you might so pluck chickens a little bit more than me, Blah. Who knows? Let, let's let's stop talking about it. I think Peter might come after me. Uh, 5v2. <laughs> Farley and Chris J just gonna hold on to this deagle. So it's a nice run for Gambit there. Uh, early aggression from FPX towards the towards the short area, but uh, spacing was off. They really weren't able to trade effectively. Sticko, Sticko did try to trade, just running on in, but there were two people ready and waiting. But Axel just ripping his head off. So Gambit, they survived the forced buy. Although for FPX, they still have those two deagles to work with. So Gambit has to still be a bit wary, but they have those SMGs to wield. MP9 and the Mac 10 and the Fanny and Hobbit's hands. Should be a clean 3-0 here. So Gambit off to a very, very good start. And all jokes aside, they have looked fantastic on Overpass, right? It's a map that they're very, very comfortable on. They, like you said, they've been undefeated in the in the recent past. And FBX haven't played this map at all, at least, uh, well, this roster hasn't. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some wild moves coming out here. Because let's be real, it's not like they won't know how to play this oh. map. Okay, okay, hold on. Oh, okay. There they go. All right. FPX to showing their individual skill here with the Deagles. Why they picked up two early kills. Chris J and Farley opening things up. And there's another one from a Deagle. Farley continuing. But a couple of kills have come back in for Gambit. Intros and Hobbit picking kills up on the rifles. Galil has been collected for Zen. If I'm Gambit, I'm getting real worried about this one. Hobbit is down on 46 HP as well. Even a body shot coming in from this Deagle is going to be enough to take him down. So it really comes down to Inters. Six and zero right now. He's had a fantastic start on overpass. He would love to continue that if possible. Spots the head of one player at barrels. That's Farling. Player that has dealt out so much damage in this round already. Two kills coming in from that Deagle. 45 seconds. Still a bit of time to play with here for Gambit. So not too worried just yet. They're still looking for that kill to drop back into that 2v2 if possible. This player at top con. Same with that Galil, or Galol, as Professor was loving during the break. And now the play comes through. Hobbit with the AK. Farlick has been burned out of position. Using the utility to their advantage. Another smoke into the middle of the site. Sticko missing his shots, and now it's all on set. He's the play with the rifle. Can he win this clutch? 1v2, and he's so damn close, but it's Inters again. Saving the day with the triple kill. That's three rounds for Gambit. He's 8-0 right now. That's a nuts from Inters, right? And every time it's looking... Tricky, every time it's looking rough. He somehow pulls off something truly magical. But this is a, a bit of a statement round coming out from uh, from South FTX. They're like, yeah, sure, we haven't played this map at all. We have a 0% win rate because, well, we haven't played it at all. But we have individuals. So Gambit have to be wary. They can't get a little too, you know, too ahead of themselves. By going to be coming in for the CD side, AWP in 
the hands of Farley. He was quite solid with the Alpen Inferno. And he is going to be playing with the rest of his team towards this B area. They have Mad, no utility, playing solo towards A. A contact hit coming in towards B. This could get messy, Dinko. This could get real messy, Zen, with the first. Axel goes down, and now Sticko trying to hold on, but he's burnt away from the barrels. He at least gets one kill before going down, but it's FPX with a man advantage. Gambit, you have to try and bite back again. This man on your screen enters. We're on board with him in connector. Just trying to find some info, see if there's any space available to work with. Again, still a full minute left for Gambit to play with. Shiro yet to get going, but he has got that AWP in his hands. Inters has made his way to top con. Hold it out a long. Now they've seized a bit of control across this map. That bomb is still in the hands of Shiro outside of the B site. Farley starting to cross over. Goes back into his corner. Utility being used up into the A site. Maybe they drop back and play with Shiro into B. This peak. Oh, Farley's going to win it. That's the bomb down outside of Monster. For this play to work, Shiro needs to stay alive. And he's not done that. 23 seconds, this round is looking done. They have to play for elimination now, Gambit, and that's just not going to happen, most likely. Oh my god, Madden presenting them with a free kill. That's some info picked up, but play this one. This one's done. This one's done. That's a rough way for the round to end as well. They, they'll still have a buy. Those sure enters and Hobbit won't get any of the bonus money, but they have the AK. Uh, and they have enough residual cash remaining in the bank for, for the utility purchase as well. Nathani can buy for himself, although he, uh, that's looking a little tricky, isn't it? Shiro can buy for himself. Axel will have to make do maybe an SMG Nathani with a Galil and some extra utility. So the buy will come in. It just won't be fantastic. In fact, the AK will be dropped over to Axel by Hobbit. A true leader is going to take one for the team. Actually, no, buys an AK for himself. So, yeah, two Galil, three AKs, not too bad. All things, it kind of works out in the end there. Uh, for the side of uh, FBX, though, it's not just about w winning, you know, just a couple of rounds. It's about trying to string a few rounds together here while building up an economy. Obviously, they are the underdogs in this matchup, as well as massive underdogs in this particular map, because the stats of stats, it doesn't really lie. They're gonna go once more for the B hit and Sticko and Chris J holding the line. Shiro on two HP will make his escape, barely limping away from what has been a bit of a bloodbath. A bloodbath with mainly the blood of Gambit over the floor. Inters yet to bleed. Nine and zero. 180 R now getting boosted up into this B side and there we go that's another kill for Inters up 10 to 0 and that's the kill that draws them back into an equilibrium heading into round 5 final few moments coming in and Gambit looking to finish on this B side of the map underhand flash out by Chris J hoping to catch some wild spray through that smoke and in fact they are going to start coming through Monster Look at FPX currently on the CT side. One play on the A side, but two on this lower side of the map. And here comes the contact play. Gambit have a lot of control out to the site. And now they've been spotted. Now they know they're here. That's the bomb as well. Molotov will come down. Rotation coming through from the final FPX player. And this bomb plan at least being confirmed for Gambit into this 3v3 post plan. And Inters continues to find kills. He's not stopping anytime soon. Dinko, 11-0. Farley, no one presenting themselves for him to find. Chris J falls as well, what? and this should be the call for the save. What a... Interest is, is a god. He's he literally an the animal. god of war. He just doesn't die. He literally doesn't die. Another 3k for him. This is unbelievable. This is the kind of performance you need. You know, we were talking about how we need to see a big individual step up from Gambit. Farley should be bringing down Nafni, or at least Nafni had the better position. He was under the scope, and Farley out of there. That's the AWP gone, picked up, saved over. Forced Shiro into this next round as well. Gambit are, are feeling good in these rounds now. Inters has been able to, to work a lot throughout these mid rounds. When things are looking rough and they're a man down, Inters has been that player there, able to pull it back and get them into winnable situations. And even attack time occurring call. And bear in mind, this is not him playing on the CT side of train, just farming kills, right? He's on a T side of overpass, not that easy. The SM genius, Chris J, has 391 kills with the MP7. Nearly three times his MP9 kills. He is a man of class. He is a man of taste. Chris J. MP5 versus MP7, blah. Which way are you going?
Uh, oh, that's a hard one. Listen, MP7 all the way. I, I like the MP5 for, you know, nostalgia reasons, you know, nostalgic reasons. Because, you know, 1.6 MP5 was, was a beautiful thing indeed. But the, the new one, I don't know. Eh, it just doesn't feel right. It just feels a little off. MP7, though. It's got some nice skins. That's weapon. about the, the only redeeming factor of the MP5. True, it does, doesn't it? But uh, I prefer kills over how it looks. Anyway, that's where you and do... I differ, Blair. Well, I fair enough. Oh, oh, sound made. Hobbit, all top tossed in, unfortunately. The CDs have evacuated the premises and falling alone out of the open. Timing quite terrible. The trap. Oh, Hobbit is a lunatic. He just runs into the flames, by both the kills. And now the CDs have to go for a play. And they've both been spotted out. That's going to be Gambit just legging it towards the A bomb side because they know it's empty. It's ripe for the picking. And Fanny just even tossing them all on the top just to make sure the CDs aren't able to do anything more. Five to one for Gambit. Flying start for them. Yeah. It's been uh, really, really solid from Gambit. I mean, uh, the T rounds haven't been fantastic. At least this is one of the better ones. But you know, a couple of rounds previous, they, they were losing the initial jewels. They were a man down. You can't really take away how impactful interest has been in terms of pulling those rounds back, getting them into winnable situations, and the fact that FPX haven't been able to convert those man advantages into round wins. And again, you know, we would look at that as a weakness for FPX, but certainly it is a strength of Gambit on this T side that they've been able to work their way back into these rounds. There's some boosts coming in, some innovative plays, interest just winning out multiple kills. Maybe FPX kind of giving them a little too much space. I think one of the previous rounds we've seen was them being able to walk straight contact through Monster, getting right up on top of the site before being spotted. And that allowed them to just explode and Inter be able to, to take down a couple of players while already being crossed out near the B site. So I think that it's been a combination of both weaknesses of FPX, but just strengths of the individuals here on Gambit as well. And this is what I was talking about over on Inferno Blood, the fact that they didn't really get much space to warm up or open up or get those afterburners going over on Gambit. Now it feels like finally they've got a little bit of leg room to play with here, and we're starting to see this team finally become comfortable into the semi-final. Oh yeah, for sure. And it's not like they had a slow start for some of the, the star individuals, right? We saw Inters, we saw Shiro and Axel looking pretty decent on Inferno, just that uh, they just seemed a little lost, like... Uh, like you said, they were overthinking things on that on the, in that second half. The first half, the CD side, less said the better. It was it wasn't that great. It was, I'm not a big fan of the way Gambit approaches the CD side on that map. But here in Overpass, they seem to know exactly what they want to do. The individuals are popping off as well. They've warmed up from the previous map and they continue to rain terror. Inter, stop it! This is just he's bullying them, Dinko. This is a revenge of Inters after what they had to go through in Inferno. It's just he's like the Terminator. He's not stopping. <laughs> Quite the opposite as well. Shiro has yet to do anything. Inter is just carrying Shiro's everybody like, on his back. I can't find anyone. He's like, yeah. where are they? They're dead. <laughs> Still looking for this kill. Zen in the bathrooms. 5-7 in hand. Oh, 48 seconds left. He's going to go back in behind Divider. Nafni. Oh, comes down to the jewel versus Stiko. And the MP9 wins it out. Now it is just Zen left alone. Nope, swinging out wide with a 5-7. Drops the bomb. He's 12 HP though. And Shiro finally gets his kill. 6-1 up for Gambit. 980R when they're 6-1 up. That's how much of impact. 14 and 0. <laughs> what is happening? He's, he's a Terminator. He's the T-1000 from Terminator 2 where he just keeps walking. And they're chasing John Connor. In this case, John Connor is the entirety of FPX and he's just completely wrecking them. He hasn't died once, man. That's just not even an assist either. He's just hitting those headshots. Yeah. Ugh. I don't know about okay. you, Blood, but whenever I have a performance like this, maybe it's every once you, in two years, right? You, you know, lose. You're in a matchmaking game. You start to really obsess over the fact that you haven't died yet, right? You're holding tab. You're looking at that scoreboard. Like, hold on. I'm, I'm a beast. I'm feeling it. See if he can keep it up. He just had enough. He's like, you know what? I'm done doing all the crap rolls. I'm just gonna go and just frag everyone. Show what, show what I've got. And and we've seen this. We've seen Inters have these games, right? And he's one of the guys where, alongside Shiro and Axile, they obviously it's so easy for them to kind of be the stars of this team. But there are moments when Shiro kind of like has a quieter game, or Axile's not really stepping up. You know who steps up? It's always Inters consistently. And uh, it's really cool for him to like get up to a start like this. 
seven rounds. That's two kills per round. Without uh, I've died once. It's just that's that's just kind of nuts, man. Well, B hit coming in. They have a bit of a setup going on over towards Monster, and they have backup in the form of uh, of Chris J with the AUG. Top of the heavens position. Smoke's gonna rain in, and he's gonna be dropping on down. Is he though? No, he's not. Gonna stick around. Chris J tried to body block that smoke, but it didn't really work out for him. Now Zen is gonna be trying to spring into action. Hobbit clearing up this time. Sticko still outside of Monster. He's still hanging around in terms of another kill here. Shira onto the side, but that's the bomb down. And Axel worth the headshot. Close out the round for Gambit. Two players staying alive. One of them obviously enters. 15-0 right now. 7-1. to one. As we go into round number nine, FPX not getting that done. And like you said, they had a pretty decent setup on the CT side there for the attack into the B side. It just doesn't really work out for them. All I care about is interest is 15 to 0. <laughs> that's just that's just sucking everything out of this game. We're just focusing on that one aspect of the semifinal. The well, entire today. The entire of Gambit have 18 kills. He's got 15. <laughs> that's just wild. What? Well, Naphne, he's been uh, the front man in a lot of these executes and will be the front man walking through middle as well. Hold it in behind him. He opened up that B site in the previous round. A fantastic showing there to really give Gambit that huge advantage. Now this time, just walking up mid into A. Hobbit again with the opening kill. Naphne throwing his Molotov down into bank. Follow-up Itchy comes in. That's another 2k from Hobbit. He's up 10 and 5. He's playing well as well. That bomb can go down. Extra money can be secured. And we will go into round number 10 with Gambit up at 1. It's all about how much damage FPX can get into this, and it's not looking great. The worrying factor here for uh, for FPX is also the fact that, uh, well, uh, the money is starting to spiral a little out of control for Gambit as well. I know it's a T side and everything, where you know you can be forgiven for not really having too much a bank, but this is getting ludicrous. You're gonna have about three players almost at 10k, eight and one. And one of the players just sold 15 and oh, it's a uh, team's called Fun Plus Phoenix, but there is no fun being had. If you are just tuning in, this is currently the second semi final of today. Our first semi-final saw Big and Spirit battle it out for a spot in the grand final. Spirit actually won that war of attrition and find themselves in the grand final of the first DreamHack Open of 2021. Will it be a CIS matchup though? Currently FPX leading the way with 1-0 lead in terms of maps, but Gambit have woken up going into the second and are looking fantastic. We're only expecting the boost, but doesn't look like... Sorry. Yeah, probably expecting the boost, but Gambit not really going for this. The Molotov's a dead giveaway. That there are at least a couple of players. The flashbang's good for Nathani to find Farley. That's an important pick to find. That's the AWP we're taking down. The highest rated player for FPX so far this tournament. Will be no more. There's a player oh. hunting down. Zen enters. Kill number 16. And once more, Denko, he doesn't take a single point of damage. Madden has to push on up. He needs to find something. He's going to aggress, but he might just be walking into straight into his death because Shiro is so aware. Up trained in his position. He's gonna blink first. Oh, Shiro, oh. he's gonna get the shot off, but no kill. Because the shot doesn't connect. Now Madden goes again. You re pick and is up. You're gonna go down. And Shiro taking another kill and adding it to the collection of Gambit. The only player to go down here for Gambit is Naphne in this round. FPX, you can definitely see where they're looking a little bit lost over on Overpass. They haven't really been able to figure out. How do you approach this one? And with 30 seconds left, Gambit are up 9-1. to one. What a different story one map makes. You know, we have a short break, we come right back, and now Gambit of the team in complete control. And here comes the walk up into the A side. Stick goes here with his AWP, but he's got to pull off the heroics. The bomb goes down. Oh, he lines up the second shot, but cannot get it off. Hobbit, 11 now picked up. 9-1 to one for Gambit. Tactical timeout coming through for FPX, and it's the first tactical timeout as well. And also the first death for interest. The man bleeds. Franchise player Chris J played 41,641 <laughs> rounds for Mouse Sports. 
And before today, just 3,256 elsewhere. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's just incredible. Chris Jobs, he spent a very long time over on that Mouse Sports team. And what I actually feel like Blight is a positive is the amount of different roles he had to play in that Mouse Sports team. He's kind of the polar opposite of JKS to me, right? Because JKS played all that time in 100 Thieves and Renegades, and he played the same kind of roles, right? He was the star player. He was, he was that player that was given everything he wanted. Whereas what you can see the problems now going to complexity when he has to change it up a little bit. Whereas Chris J has played about 20 different roles within Mouse Sports. He's been out of the team and back in a week later. You know, he's had so much going on in that team. So he, he is ready for a new team, I feel. True. You know, it's, it's, it, it, it could also be the, the entire honeymoon period as well, right? I mean, take nothing away. It could continue to be great for them. Zen, aggression, finds Hobbit, AK-47 retrieve. Bear in mind, this is a bit of a purchase coming in from the CTs. Uh, sticker going for the full-fledged investment. I don't know if that was a misbuy, perhaps? That is a little weird. It has to be a misbuy, right? He's got the FAMAS, the rest of them were just deagles and some Kevlar. Zen picking up the AK is going to make things a little bit more trickier for Gambit. However, the Terminator is still alive, enters. He's holding the back lines for the time being. And they have pushed in pretty deep towards Monster. They haven't really made a single footstep. No sound being made. Slowly inching ahead towards B. All four players congregating. And Chris J, there's no flash for him. He's just going to go for oh, the dry bad. peak. Spots a player out. Nefati is a free kill. Never mind. Chris J finds him. He's still blinded, but he's going to pull off the great escape as Axile just finds Farley crossing on over towards Heavens. And Axile, he should be careful because the two players make that three ready and waiting for him. Three Gambit players starting to move forward. Axel with a headshot, just cleanly picking up stick up. Inters has had his first death, of course, 16 and one right now, but bomb plane coming through in that smoke. That nade goes into the middle of the site. All top down into the monster side at the right side here for Zen. That time will take on. Just that one AK right now for FPX. Inters has got himself into graffiti. Shiro playing for Barrel, smoke into the middle of the site. Now they walk forward. Shiro, first headshot, so clean. The lineup nearly gets them down in one spray. Eventually we'll get his 3k. And that's 10 rounds for Gambit. This is just dominant blood. This is... We're getting into the territory now where... It could be a little bit embarrassing maybe for FPX if this continues, but... Time out coming through, they've got the money going into the next. Um, I'm kind of like, okay. Gambit are one of the the favorite teams in this tournament, right? Like FBX, sure. I mean, they've had a fantastic run so far, but the Terminator, aw, Elliot, you shouldn't have. It took 10 rounds for <laughs> Inters to match his kill total from map one and for 15 fewer deaths. That's just ludicrous. He was fragging as good as Shiro and Axile in that first uh, in the, in the, in the first map, despite it being a losing effort. So, man, he just popped off 16 and one, still looking fantastic is, uh, is the man of the hour right now yeah but but for gambit like like i said like uh, this game we knew it was going to be a great game we knew it was probably going to be a three mapper but what i didn't want to see was either of these two teams kind of like capitulate under the pressure or maybe you know just kind of to put it very bluntly suck and looking at map one i was a little worried i was like oh no this is looking kind of rough for a gambit they were looking kind of lost at times but them stepping up just waking up and just kind of brushing away map number one that's a good sign so even if you get to map number three we're in for a hell of a series map number three will be train if we need it and chris j holding on axel about to walk through monster he just gets absolutely torn apart chris j will be looking for his next victim will he be able to claim another kill for his side That'll be a huge opening, and while Naphne will go down to the spray from Zen, playing with fire a little bit, that getting caught out by the Finn. Story of ice and fire. And now Madden. Oh. Try and catch this M4 kill. There it is. That's the proactiveness that Madden's tried to get going a few times, but he's just kind of been shut down every time he's tried. And it's usually because uh, Gambit, the way they've been playing this default, they usually have the one player making sure that there's no early aggression towards the uh, the fountain area. And it's all on the Terminator himself. 1v5. Can he get to 21 and 1, Dinko? Can he get to an even more ludicrous scoreline? That's the question. He's going to check the left hand corner. He should. Suppose right. Wins the deal. That's one down. Four more to find. Spots ahead. Switches over to the AWP. Flashback tossed in. 
tearing down. And for FBX, 10 seconds. They know there's no way Interest can win this round. But can Interest survive with the AWP? That's the question. They, I don't think they're fancying the chance of hunting him down oh. either. And Interest is unstoppable. That, that's just... He, he's just a... He's just a god. He's a god killer. He's just a lunatic. God emperor of mankind. I don't know what else to add there. It's like he can do no wrong. <laughs> it's like, would that be the play you would consider to do right there, boy? Absolutely no, not. No, no. Why would he but drop that it, for two <laughs> seconds? Just does it. Yeah, it's like, that's the level he's playing at right now. He's just calling for everything he's going right now. But 10 to 2, nonetheless, we head into round number 13. FPX need to come back. They need to find a few more rounds to get them into a comfortable enough half. But Gambit, just a reminder, interest has been on one, 18 and 1. We're just seeing him drop down the ladder, save an AWP into the next round. So he is definitely feeling it. Quicker play from Gambit in to be this time straight through Monster. Off from Chris J playing at Barrels and Hobbit. He might just get caught by this running over the top. And Chris J looking the wrong way, completely looking away from the Wait. flash. And Hobbit oh. just takes over the site. That's just rough for Chris. And even though they have three players towards short, the bomb side is lost. It's a problem. Also, just going back to the previous round, uh, Zen was the one who disconnected. So maybe that's why he wasn't able to like reply back when Inter's just dropped down with the AWP. Stiko, I think he spotted a the player there. It's a 4v4. He's going to find Shiro. And that's man advantage for the CTs as they're going to attempt to go for this retake. Could pull back into the round, but Inter's has come through again, of course. The equalizer. Oh, the molly. Now Molotov coming in indeed, but Sticko's running him down. That's the headshot. Good Molotov. That's going to force back Zen. Doesn't allow him to peek into the site. Now this time is really running down. And Hobbit, he's got a good angle to fight Madden, but he still comes in with the kill. Now Nafni alone overrun, going for the no defuse, but there's absolutely no time for this Madden. He was the player with the kit, but I think he takes a little too long to get onto it. And that is going to be an around for Gambit. 11-2 up. So frustrating here for Fun Plus Phoenix and enters, man, that Molotov. See, he doesn't even need to get kills to help his team out. What a legend. What an absolute god. I love that. I love that awareness. Like, I honestly thought he was going to get hit. Once he gets first kill, I thought he was just going to Molotov the tunnel so they don't push him. Instead, he just goes for that set Molly. That is so it's on the fly thinking. Great stuff from Inters. And for FBX, well, it's a time again, Dinko. The MP7 comes out. Hobbit, close to the corner. It's Chris J with one on the MP7. Another one added to his career stats. As Axel blinded, gets the trade through, and Zen throws an air from afar that gives the man advantage once again to FBX. They've had so many fights before, so they just haven't been able to convert into round wins at this point. Sticko getting some help from Madden. <laughs> Became very awkward. In that connect, you jewel. And now Madden, he's fully blinded. Oh, what a kill from Nafni. Just fully blinds Madden, turns around, gets the headshot. And now Shiro's left alone. 1v2. We know this guy can clutch. We've seen it before. And now 1v2 for him. Get Gambit, a 12th round. He's going to walk up to the A site. Rotation coming up from one player that's Farley that's gone on up. And it'll be a battle of the Alpers in this A site, given that Farley does peak. Instead, he's going to take his time and get into bank and play with his teammate. He's got that advantage. Shiro's going to toss that Molotov. That's info. That should cause the rotation now very quickly from Sticko. Both players with AWPs. For the meantime, all three ops on the server. As that bomb will take on, Shiro looking to draw this into a 1v1 clutch if possible. Spots out the player on the stairs and that drops back into middle using the cover. A headshot onto Farlick now looking for the 1v1 and he's missed the oh. shot. He goes up again. Sticko trying to get a dunk but Shiro with the 1v2. That is huge. The sheer nuts on the guy to go for that repeak. So well done. So well done. And I had a feeling there, Dinko. The moment with Shiro, 1v2. I noticed that both Farley and the final player, they had AWPs that was Sticko, of course. I'm like, yeah, Shiro, he's got this in the back. He's had a kind of a quiet map here so far mainly because he just hasn't been able to find anyone and when it comes down to it he's able to kill it the god emperor of mankind enters dropped a 21-4 <laughs> on saw in november that's the game i remember and a 21-7 indignitas in december on this map so overpass that's his domain i'm loving how your terms are just turning into fun facts but it's brilliant well no uh, no no warhammer 40k fans around i guess I guess I'm the only nerd here. Anyway, 12 to 2, Denko. 
Uh, and FBX, it's uh, it's been grim. It, there's been no fun to be had. It's fun minus Phoenix at this point in time. And uh, SMGs come out, MP9s, MP7, once more for Chris and the mass. They at least have invested in quite a bit of utility. Going to be going for an early battle towards uh, Fountain, which is good. At least try and uh, get something done here. And Madden's making quite a bit of noise. I think Nafani heard him. Flashbang's good, and he's gonna turn away! Almost gets a second kill, but he will fall, but not before he tags into us down to 21 HP. But in Tours, as we all know, Denko, 100 HP, 1 HP doesn't matter as long as he's walking around. He is a threat. Fire leak. Went for with the Tiki Gold, gets caught by Hobbit. Yet another opening kill for Hobbit here. Into the second for uh, Gambit. That's their second kill coming through, and Farlig and Madden both already picked off. And when you, when you look at how Gambit have been looking in these uh, situations where they've got man advantages, they've been looking really solid. They've been able to pull off a lot of rounds, being a couple of players down as well. So I'm feeling real confident about Gambit in this final round of the half. It's looking like they're going to lock in 13. 4v2, Zen and Chris J, and just left alone. Then playing from APC, just goes over to Dice Box, and now the contact play. A couple of players stepping in behind Shiro, but they're still walking up long. Zen trying to get ready for this, but he's pulled an aid, and his hand goes around the corner. Shiro's going to spot that. And now it's Chris J in a 1v4 with an MP7. And it's 13 2 for Gambit. I've, I've got to call it blind. I don't think that's a very bold prediction, but. You may be good with the yeah. MP7, but this would take some godlike powers. Yeah, this would be the MP7 play of the of the year, or maybe of all time for him to pull this one <laughs> oh, off. Yeah, of all time. He's he's even got the mouse board stickers on it. Oh, that's so oh. sweet. Walking up, sweet. and the site gets caught by Inters. Thirteen to two at the half. Gambit with a very strong performance coming out of a loss in Inferno. We'll see if they can close it out and send us to a third map after a short break. 13-2 at the half for Gambit. They're looking really solid heading into the second half. A pistol win would cement them a very strong lead here and probably looking into the distance of Trin as a third map. FPX looking pretty uncomfortable into this one, Blurt. You make a wild prediction at the start of this one saying FPX are going to win it. You can't see that. They're just not really feeling it right now. But a pistol, a pistol win, that will put them uh, at least one step closer to a potential comeback and making this scoreline look a little more respectable. Yeah, I wasn't expecting interest to just go Super Saiyan 3. I don't think okay. anybody could. <laughs> no one could. The Fanny spotting at least one player from FPX. Axel's just tucked into the corner, playing the anti-flash. He's going to spin on on round, though. Going to rely on the Fanny to make contact, spot out the players. He's turning up. He's running. Wait, what? Oh, the timing there. The timing there could be huge, but Hobbit's there, but Axel's kind of stuck on his lonesome. He's got to win this duel, and he's going to find Farley. He doesn't quite check the angle. Second kill for Axel, looking for more, and a third will not be his, but that's okay, because Hobbit's there to trade. Hobbit looking for another one, and a fadeaway shot onto Madden, leaving Chris J all by his lonesome in a 1v4 with a bomb on his back. Yeah, Chris J just running up with the bomb now. I'm going to go with this one out to his right side. It's Madden close to the truck. You kill from Chris J. And Inter is coming through, cleaning up the round again. Continue to find three? kills. 22 of 3. Now, that's <laughs> just wild. Come We're on. in round 17. 14 to in. 22 and 3. Inter is having the time of his life right now. If you needed some sort of hero performance to come in and pick you up, Inter is be able to deliver that immediately. First day delivery. Yeah, and if he carries his form into the second map, which well, you're in exile. I, oh, yeah, that's that's not good. Well, unfortunate. Port mm. Molly as well. Flashbang, they're saving, actually saving FPX from uh, probably taking quite a bit of damage from that FAMAS of uh, Shiro's. Or was it Axile? I forget. Anyway, they're going to slowly creep on up, though. And for Axile uh, and Shiro not really spotting anyone towards Fountain, they're going to be like, all right. Might be taking this one a little bit slower, but I like this uh, reposition from Axel. Oh, the timing here could be massive. He hears a flashbang, and oh! How does he not get the kill? Chris J gets the frag Shiro. The nade to find Farley. 
He's alone for the time being, but no, never mind. Backup is arriving. Hobbit with the perfect timing on this flank. He spots the leg, the foot of Chris, and I think Chris has spotted him as well because you can see the other teams falling on back and Hobbit baiting him out. He gets dinked, but he gets the kill and he will fall back to safety. Nafni running forward, catches the bomb. That's it out of there. And Hobbit just in behind the smoke. 40 seconds left to make his play. Madden has just taken his teammate down. Nafni's going to hear these footsteps running up into the A site fire middle. And he's going to wrap around the backside. Madden, he gets around the corner here at Divider, but his teammate is gone. And now it is all on Madden. He's dead. Truly, Nafni's got this, taking his time. And there it is. The headshot, the round picked up. And it's 15 to 2 for Gambit. One round away from securing map number three in this semifinal. They are not done. They are certainly here to play in this semis. Is this the most lopsided game we've had so far in uh, Dream Mag Open Jan? I... I, I, off the top of my head, at least of what we've seen, certainly so. It looks like yeah. it is. And, and this is even considering uh, the NA side of things. I think there was a 16-3 win where... Uh, I think was, was yeah, it was Rebirth. Yeah, Extra Salt got beat by Rebirth. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but but that was 16-3, right? So, if this ends 16-2... Yeah. It was overpass as well, I believe. It was indeed. Stick up. Not, not too far off. He hits the shot. It's not a headshot, unfortunately, for him. And he'll go down to Hobbit. Man advantage picked up for Gambit into this one. Looking uh, like... The bells are tolling, at least for this map for FPX, clearly. Gambit activated. FPX. Looking rough. Great flashbang there. For Chris, but he doesn't want to face. He's always lonesome. He's going to go for the drive peak, and the Deagle gets the tag. Doesn't get the kill. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, Shiro is continuing to... Just make things even more painful. One remains. It's Farley. 1v5 with the scout. He finds one. And that's all he'll get, Dinko. 16 to 2. Perhaps the most dominant showing we've seen so far on the map in DreamHack Open January. And Gambit, well, if you had any doubts about the performance in Inferno, they're back, baby. And